Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Secret of Evermore. The last episode, we got to Ebon- or not Ebon Keep. We got to Ivor Tower, or through the sewers of it, anyway. And we also, uh, we got a couple alchemy spells that were relatively powerful. We also got the Crusader Sword. We're halfway to Evan Keep, I hope. Keep dropping nectar. Like a lot of nectar. They've said there's dragons, but, uh, I have not seen any. Round of candy for 50 furlings. What the heck does that mean? At this point, I think they're just trying to take me away from my goal. Alright, good shadow. And yeah, this is where I think it is. Here's the dragon. Oh right, you can't do alchemy. My mistake. Okay, well, let's just use speed up. Ah! I'm not mistaken, the Crusader Sword actually does more damage to dragons. Ow! Aren't you rude as to... It's rude to pick your teeth while you're in a battle. Ow. It'd be really nice if the dog's damage counted while I was doing this. Okay, well, let's just heal. Let's use speed again. In the middle of the cutscene. 2,000 gold pieces! Cutscene! Are we safe? Okay, good. Receive Lance! This is an item that you actually want to upgrade to level 2, unfortunately, now that I remember. Um, there is a boss in Ivor Tower that can only be- or not Ivor Tower, Ivor Tower. In, um... Which actually, if I look at my, uh, level here, level up at skill. So I'm gonna for a knight. Pimer Fury. No. Remember certain things about this place, because we will be coming back here later. But I do highly suggest that you level up your lance to level 2. If you don't, you're gonna have a really bad time if you didn't level up any alchemy, like I have. Because there's a boss in, uh... There's a boss in Ebert Emmon Tower, I'm just gonna tell you right now, just so that you're aware if you're playing along. There is a boss there that requires range. And if you leveled up a close-range weapon, or, or rely on the dog so far for fights, you're gonna have a rude awakening with that battle. I just wanna let people be more aware of that, because, um... It's gonna make a, it to be a pretty big nightmare, because that boss is very strong. But not only that, um... 
the boss is generally, like, hard to beat on its own if you don't have a ranged weapon. So if you level up the lance up to level 2, you'll be able to throw it, and it's also a level up spear. You can use the dino spear if you got it to level 2 during that uh, swamp area, but, uh, yeah. How much that could be? Four. Four kills. Unfortunately, this means that you'd have to kill a hundred enemies by the time you get to the boss. In fact, I think I'm actually going to switch the dog to not fight unless we're go we actually get into a boss fight. Um, and I'm actually going to put him on search, not fight. Okay. Alternatively, I guess I could switch to the dog. And just have the main character fight like I do. I guess the only qualm with that is I can't open any chests if we run into them. Until I switch. Problem is, it's going to be very slow leveling. Alright. Kitten keeps getting in front of my screen, so I can't see. going through here. Thankfully, since everything is one-hittable here, it really helps if you need to level up your uh, lance fast. Okay. Honey, that's a good item. Technically, I guess, level up uh, the spear to however much you want if you wanted to uh, have the best time fighting that boss. Ow. Hmm. Really, it's hard to pin them down, though. This area. I'm better off fighting the slimes. At least they don't move. See, what does that put me at now? Okay, 20. That's not bad. Yep, it really is one per kill. I really think they should have upped the rates. Now, I do think that, um, it would have probably made the game too easy. But the one thing about it is, when a game has a lot of weapons that can be leveled like such to become powerful, it's hard for, like, someone who wants to try out all the weapons to try out all the weapons. Normally, I think people would be like me and just pick, like, one type of weapon and then just stick with that, rather than picking one from all three or circulate, depending on the situation. It, it's... On one hand, it's a really cool idea, but on the other hand, if it's not done correctly, it can be rough for a player to not be overwhelmed. Do 
Because we may have the lance, but that's not the final items of the game. Like, we are not even close to that. And, like I said, that can be really rough for all those different weapon types. And you have to change weapon type because they get stronger as the game progresses and all that. And I think I may have just went the wrong way. I believe that is yep exactly where I came out of crap reverse engineered where I came from end up in the wrong spot not too surprised though given my track record I guess if anything I can take away from this is it does give me a little bit more opportunity to level up my weapon before the worst case scenario. Because I don't actually have any backup plan for fighting that boss. I might have call beads, but that's not really going to help much. Where am I at now? 34, that's not bad, but it's still far away. Hmm. I hope I'm not going through circles again because, uh, my memory sucks. Well, here's a wall I've never seen before, I don't think. Finally! Ooh! Where are you? Raptor! damage I did to you, buddy. Another one. So what am I at? 
Because if worse comes to worse, I'll actually have to level up the last few points on screen or off screen. I'd like to not do that though. Oh no. Another thing I have to worry about. This is a viable playstyle if you're seeing that the dog just is not attacking at all. Because he's in total search mode. You could try to beat up an entire pacifist run with the dog just sitting there being like, Hey, I'm not going to attack anybody. You're on your own, pal. Not really sure how that would work, because eventually you're going to need to have your dog do something. Given all the dog-related, uh, solo chapters. See, who is in our cell? Ow! Well, crap, I can't actually damage him too much. that does. Well, not too much. Now let's just have him attack it and... Build up power! Strike! And didn't work. Alright. I think that's everything. Locked. Means we have to get through another way. I think this should be it. It's a bit suspicious. Ah, so you can do stuff here. Okay, well, it takes my previous theory out of. Never mind. <laughs> Ah, the music of this place. So remember when what I said about the atmosphere of this place and the music and everything is my favorite in this game. Everyone's boarded up. There's a secret spot somewhere around here. No in. What have we here? You're not from Ebon Keep or Ivor Tower, as far as I can tell. No, we're from Podunk. Can't say that I've heard of Podunk. Maybe you've heard of me. The name's Cecil of Baron Castle. Ever heard of my victory over Zeramus? Sure, of course. Now I've settled down with my wife Rosa, and we live a quiet life here in Evadkeep. 
Is all this armor yours? Yes, this is my business. I sell items I've accumulated over the years. It's nice, but business has been slow lately, what with most people leaving Forever Tower. Why didn't you leave too? Just stubborn, I guess. We didn't feel right about it. Still don't. You seem like a nice kid, but you're never going to go- Going to get anywhere with that chintzy armor. Let me suit you up in style. Since you've heard of my adventures, I feel like we're old friends. So I'll give you a special deal. What can I do for you? Dragon's Claw! Shining Armor! Knight's Helm! I appreciate your business. Please take this powerful weapon with my thanks. I found it in one of my adventures in the jungle on the plateau. Bazooka! Thunderball Protectile! Hello, kid. Nice to see you again. What can I do for you? This guy! Right here. Is my favorite supporting character in this game. He only has a few lines like that, but he always welcomes you, and he's always nice, and... I don't know, he's always felt like, to me, like he was, like, a character I wish they did more on. I'd like a separate story just going over this guy's adventures. I think it would be really awesome. Seventy-three! Sixty-five! 72. One of these houses has, like, a secret entrance in it for an alchemy spell. There we go. My alchemy business is all but dried up. I'm thinking about retiring. You're such a cutie. Let me teach you a useful alchemy formula. Requires one acorn and two parts water. Regrowth. We're gonna need that. Um. Drain, firepower, levitate. Let's get it rid of corrosion. Get rid of Atlas, because we're not gonna use Atlas for a little while. I forgot all about that. Take heal, revive, and speed off. We're gonna keep cure. We're gonna put on regrowth. We're gonna put heal next to that. Then we're gonna put revive next to that. We're actually, I'm gonna put it in the middle. Then we're gonna put speed at the last one. And then we're gonna put corrosion. Levitate. I think that's good. Purchase ingredients? Uh, yeah, we're gonna need tons of acorns after what you just sold me. Or gave me, rather. Might as well buy some wax. Also, just saying at this point in the game... Don't worry about money too much. Buy as many ingredients as you want. This is the one point in the game when money is, isn't is really of much consequence. It's going to be a while before we can buy armor again, and you're going to be getting a lot of money before that, so... Ethanol, crystal... I always end up making sure that I get enough to do regenerate quite a bit. Or growth. Very important. Water. That's weird. There's a path right through there that should take us immediately through that room, but it's not uh, letting me. I don't think there's another stairwell either. 
Nope. But yeah, when I came to this area, it was so somber and so quiet and quaint. But also, like, abandoned. And the fact that there was, like, a literal hero in this town that nobody ever really cared about his opinion. I just would really like to see more of it. This is getting into a thing where I was talking about I wish wholeheartedly that Secret Evermore had a sequel. It has such sequel material. It doesn't even have to have the main character in it. Like, really. Like, Evermore just has backstory. If you talk to everybody around, like, there's just backstory in every corner. If you talk to somebody, you're bound to get some sort of historical thing, on the, like, on the area, or, um, like, a personal backstory of a character. Even if it's a little bit. I always felt like this was one of the most immersive games when I was a kid, and... Especially when I got to this area. This is what made this area my favorite chapter. Despite all the hardship with, you know... Ivor keep and all that with the dog and then going into more mazes and then more mazes on top of that um like that can make it things a bit sour but this area really sealed the deal for me for making this my favorite chapter <coughs> I do think uh Colossia definitely um Eclosia Whichever. <laughs> I forgot the desert uh, names town. Uh, despite all that, like that was where like they think the game starts getting good. I feel like this game gets better with this area, like even better than before. I just wish there was so much more to like. After this game was made, there were no sequels, I believe, ever made about uh, of this game. I have looked. Um, like there's, they just kind of dropped the game after its release, which is quite sad, given the fact that this game is so enjoyable and immersive and everything else about it. But anyway, I mumbled on for too long. In the next episode. We'll be continuing forward. We'll also be trying to level up Lance to two. See you guys then.